First day of September, we look ahead to the upcoming school year, a year that no doubt is going to have some challenges from COVID to getting kids back socially and apt back into school. But what, what about academics when it comes to that? What about math? And we're here at Mathnasium in St. Catharines, back with John. Good to see you, John. You too, Tim. It's been a little while. It has been a while. Excited for the school year? I'm very excited for the school are year. Are the kids excited for the school year? Uh, I hope they are. Yeah, it's going to be a very, right? like you said, it's going to be an interesting year. Okay, because it's good to have them back that they can be here because the past year you've kind of been in here and, and online yeah. and all that type of stuff. Yeah. What is, um, let's first start with summer slide. What is the summer slide? So that's just a concept that usually when kids would finish school up, take the summer off, we typically see a bit of a dip with their math skills. Um, then they come back and we kind of rebuild those skills again. But it's a common kind of theme in the math world, especially that you have that summer slide. We have summer slide, now we have the COVID oh slide. Boy. Yeah. Let's bring those two together. So I think the biggest challenge that we're going to see, uh, even when we kind of look at math before COVID, uh, they used to do the EQAO tests, which is the kind of that provincial test where they're a, a standardized test to assess where kids are in relation to provincial standards. And even before COVID, uh, I think it was less than 50% of the Ontario kids were even meeting, reaching the provincial standard. Now you have COVID for a year and a half where they're online learning. And there's so much data out there now showing that they didn't retain a lot of that online learning, right? They shut their cameras off. They're shutting their microphones off. It's very difficult for teachers to do that. Uh, there's going to be drastic slides. In How that. are we going to get back? to where we need to be. Can we get back to where we need yeah, to be? Yeah, I, I, th I think we can. I think it's going to be a challenging year for teachers, especially in the beginning. If their expectation is that they're going to start teaching at a grade level, they have to go back and kind of fill in some of these gaps. Uh, what we do a lot of the times is we're just assessing kids at the grade level before just to help parents understand saying, hey, is there a problem here? How big is the problem? Gives them a, gives them a bit of a plan on how to fix it. Because then how can you fill that gap for, yeah. for parents? So we build, we, we identify what specific problems in relation to the last year are missing and then we build our learning plans to help teach th those concepts to ages kids. being what grade we go grade 2 to 12 two but to I think 12. the biggest impact are gonna be those grade 2 to 8 right now because we have a nice demographic of kids in here this yeah. morning I think we have some maybe not as young as grade 2 yeah but we have a few th up to grade 8 yeah right yeah and, oh, then yeah. In, and then into high school too yeah right yeah because that's when it becomes more and more difficult yeah. and then the apathy for math sets in it, 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 it's, it's hard, right? The, 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 the high school kids, I think, fared a little bit better because they had the maturity to kind of go through the online stuff. But having kids online teaching math, it was, it was I, I had a, a son, so I could speak firsthand with it. It, it, it was really tough, right? Okay, I want to take a break because we're going to hear, be here for the morning because there's a few things that we want to talk about. So there's something called the math proficiency test. Yes. And that's not for kids. Well, it's for the bigger kids yeah. in... Uh, teachers College. That's right. And something that's being passed that's now been pushed to the ba end of this year? Uh, December 31st, their teachers are now required to write that test. Okay, so, so we'll do that. Um, and then we always come to Mathnasium and <laughs> John always likes to test out my math skills for the enjoyment of you at home. Do you yeah. have some for me this I morning? I do, Tim. We're going to put you to the test again. Okay, two locations that John runs here in the St. Catharines and Stony Creek. There's other Mathnasiums around as well to help your kids get back at her and avoid that COVID slide. Welcome back to St. Catharines here at Mathnasium. We have Aaron helping a little guy there with his uh, math skills because yeah, we're getting back to school and then we haven't been working that math muscle in a while. So we're back here with John trying to avoid the, the summer slide, which always happens. And then there's that COVID slide, which is definitely going to happen. Why is math so important, John? I think it's just something that kids are going to need down the road. Um, we always talk about all those STEM careers where kids are going to eventually end up in the science, technology, engineering, and math. And you need math to get into one of those Because there's always that argument where like, kids and parents, what do I even need to know this for? No. I think the only profession that you don't yes. need math is TV <laughs> broadcasting. <laughs> As we will prove, <laughs> coming up, right. as we've done in the past. Yes. Why do I even come back and see you? <laughs> okay, something else that's big. Yes. Okay, this is big. What is it? the math proficiency test? So the math proficiency test is a new uh, initiative that was launched by the, the Ministry of Education okay. where every new graduating teacher has to write this math proficiency test in order to get their license to become a teacher. What if they're not a 
they want to get in math. Like well, that's they're like a, I don't know, I kindergarten think teacher. That, that was the challenge. So that's what was causing all the anxiety for a lot of teachers if they want to be a JK to grade four teacher. It, 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 there was right. a bit of a disconnect, but it's still required. So what we did is we, we partnered with the Faculty of Education at Brock University. They sent a communication to, to all their recent grads and we're offering free math help for any of those teachers that need help preparing for and the test. And do they need help? Some of them do, yeah. You, you have a couple of examples of what could be found on yeah. this proficiency so there, test. There's kind of a practice test that's available for them online, but these are some of the types of questions for them, right? They're easy, medium, and some of them actually get pretty hard so for a lot of them. this is easy? Like, obviously yeah. you know my math skills, <laughs> but. Yeah, you would just have to line them up, line up your place values, and then just do straight vertical addition for that. So without a calculator doing this. Yep, yep. Without a calculator doing this. It's pretty tough for, for that one for a lot of folks. And then into some word problems. Word pro How do you work through word problems? Uh, very carefully. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like the, these are, you have, you'll, you'll have to write an equation to kind of figure this. It is an equation. You'll you're just yeah. You'll have to have, figure out how to write an okay. equation. Okay. You've had some that. success though too, right? Yeah. We've had, we've helped a bunch of teachers uh, and I, I always reach out and say, let me know how you did and they're passing. Because they're getting into, they're getting into teacher's college and trying to avoid math because sure. they've never done math and maybe they're not good at math, well, but they still have to pass this test that's right. if they want to become a teacher. Yeah, they, that's true. And they haven't seen some of this stuff in quite a while, right? Yeah. So once you start going through and it, reminding them. It is good because you never actually know where your career is going to go. No. And if math is a kind of a, a hot topic right now with yeah. COVID, the COVID slide, yeah. it's, it's better if more people are aware of what math and it's important. 100%. Okay. Yeah, it just opens doors down the road. Okay. Well, we got Rick and Aaron helping you out here. What do you normally have with uh, instructors to students? So we always have uh, four students per one instructor. Okay. Um, but parents got to reach out to you and book a time. And you well, do we're doing, they, they, they can contact Rick or call any of the centers right. and you'll get free assessments done just to, to help out. I know there's a number of centers. You got two here at St. Catharines, yep. Stony Creek's the other one. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Uh, Let's see how I did with my summer slide, <laughs> with my COVID slide. We come back to Mathnasium, yeah. my morning life. Welcome back to Mathnasium in St. Catharines. I don't know why I put myself through this with John, but uh, we've been here uh, a number of times. And I think, I don't know, at home, are you kind of like doing it with me, <laughs> making yourself feel a little bit better? But we put these problems out. Yes. About how to break these problems down. I think when, when you see that math can be taught in a way that makes sense to kids, all of a sudden they get more engaged with it. Um, math is a confidence killer for a lot of kids, right? And the one thing that we tell all of our students that come in that do have, a, a, in the most part, a lot of a lack of confidence, it's you don't hate math, you just hate the way math makes you feel when you don't understand it. But once you start to understand it, math can actually be a pretty cool topic. Okay. Right. I'm nervous. All right, you, but it's good. Nerves are good. Nerves, you nerves, are, nerves are good. Okay. So what is seven percent of two fifty, John? Yes. So the way that you want to understand a question like this is first understanding what the word percent means. So if you have a part-time job and you make ten dollars per hour, another way of saying that is you make ten dollars for each hour you work. Right. Cent in math. How many cents are in a dollar? Cents are in a dollar, 100. How many cents, centimeters are there in a meter? 100. How many centuries or years in a century? 100. 100. So cent in math is 100. So you think about percent. Always 100. For each 100. So before we solve this, let's look at what is 7% of 100? This is telling us that we want to take 7 for each 100. How many hundreds do we have here? We have one. One. So we're going to take one seven. Yeah. 7% of 200. We're going to take 14. Yeah, 7 for the first seven 100, seven, 7 for the second 100, yes. 14. Let's go to 300. 7 plus 7, seven plus, plus 7, seven plus 7 equals 21. But right. now let's go to the 7% of 250. How many whole hundreds do we have here? So we have two. So how many sevens are we going to take? Uh, two. So 7 plus 7. Plus, now we don't have a whole third hundred, do we? How much that, that, the, we, we have, have half. So what do you think we're gonna add? You're gonna have three and a half. Three and a half. We add that up. So 14, 17 and a half. And that is three. your answer. <laughs> Right. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So then you start feeling good about yourself. So then you can get into something else. But just, breaking it down like that. It just that, makes sense when you see it this way, yeah. right? Whereas you, you think, you know, take it to 10% and multiply it and then subtract right. and it, it just doesn't have to Molly, be that way. Impressed? 
<laughs> yeah, you are. Okay, we'll take another break. Um, I'm talking loudly in class here and That's disrupting, right. disrupting everybody in here who are working away. Uh, we got another one for me? Yep, I okay, do. Okay, we'll do that. So we get back to a Mathnasium in St. Catharines, preparing you for school on Morning Live. Well, oh, good morning. Welcome back to Mathnasium. So I got the first one. We'll see what John has prepared for me and you at home when it comes to the second problem. And I really like the way that you're able to work things out sure. on the whiteboard. And yep. that's something you would typically do in class or, sure. or what Rick or Aaron are doing with the kids right now. That's right. Because the understanding of how you get there, not just getting the answer. That's right. That's what will help you with other stuff. That's, that's where you're connecting all those dots. Yeah. Okay. Right. So what is 2,000 divided by 32? So the, the purpose Where's of my this, calculator? Yeah, see, this is it. You've got to try and solve this without using a calculator, right? Okay. So what we try to teach our kids is try and use smaller, easier numbers. So a way you could look at this and saying, well, these are big numbers. What if I divided 2,000 by 2? What do I get? You get 1,000. So if I divide that one by 2, I have to divide 32 by 2, which would be? Oh, goodness. <laughs> 16, that's 16, right, Tim. Yeah, that's that's right great. On. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, yeah. we can now keep breaking this down. What's 1,000 divided by 2? 500. Divided eight. by 8. Still, we can go further. Yeah, 250. 4. You can keep going. Okay, 125, 2. Divided by 2. Okay, okay, so now this is where maybe kids might struggle. But if they understand how to break up numbers, build them back together again, right. we want 125. We're trying to find half of 125. Half of 125 is the same thing as 120 plus 5. What's half of 120? 60. What's half of 5? 2.5. We add those together. It's 62.5. Your answer. Ah. So from the original question, simple, 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 makes sense. Uh, awesome. What's the number one thing you hear from parents? When Sorry? Comes, what's the, the number one thing you hear from parents? Uh, what right, are they, what's the issue? Typically it's homework. Uh, the reason they come here is they don't know how to help their kids with homework. The number one thing we say, oh, they, I just don't understand the way that they're, they're teaching it. It's not the way that I was taught how to do it. Um, you know, tears. You're hitting up the Googler to try and figure out how? Yeah, trying to figure things out on your own. It's very hard. You've got kids. It's, it's hard yeah. to teach our own kids. We're, right. not the, we're not math yet. I know Luke behind the camera, he's at math, and he yeah, has some it, issues, and that's what he says. So when you're teaching them, are you teaching them your way or the way the teacher wants it to be taught? So we will initially, based out, out of however they score on an assessment, the assessment pinpoints the specific areas that we str they're struggling with. We build learning plans to help with that. So we will teach those concepts our way. But when the kids bring in their homework, we're going to teach it the way that the, the, the teachers want it done, okay. right? There's some kids in here now working ahead. Yes. Okay. Yep. But once we get back to school, once we get back, that's when we're really going to see that, yeah. that COVID slide. Oh, 100%. Right? Yes. And that you're yep. willing to help out. Yeah, for sure. Anybody reach out for an assessment to? I, there's a number of mathnasium yeah. centers. They're all, all over. We're in St. Catharines. There's another one in Stony Creek and all over the place. John, great seeing you. you thanks, for, thanks for making me feel good about yeah. that. Tim Bowling, everybody. Woohoo! Yes. Crowd goes wild. <laughs> 